All right, guys, today I have an interesting video that is partly going to be an explanation and partly going to be a question. And that is, how did we get to the point with titanium frame locks. Now, I've done plenty of videos talking about alternatives or really solid knives that are alternatives to the titanium frame lock folder. And in this video, I kind of wanted to explain why so many knives or, you know, partly explain and also ask that question of why do you guys think the titanium frame lock folders are so prevalent? Because undoubtedly, and you know, like as you get more into knives, you know, more um, interested in collecting expensive knives, essentially like the mark of excellence is a titanium frame lock. Like it seems like almost every knife you see that is, you know, of decent quality or expensive, you know, full cut Customs, uh, even like I said, very expensive knives like this Damascus, you know, a Spartan Harzi folder, titanium frame lock, you know, and even down to lesser expensive knives like the Tour, you know, Merchant and um, Chasm, which is this one's actually the Chasm in particular. But, uh, you know, like these lesser expensive knives, still titanium frame lock, right? These more expensive customs, titanium frame locks. It seems like everywhere in between 150 and upwards of, you know, like a thousand, couple thousand dollars you know titanium frame locks you just run into them and certainly there are some other options out there but by and large like genuinely looking at expensive knives and customs they're basically all titanium frame locks so how do we get to this point where like the mark of excellence is a titanium frame lock so first off, I think a lot of it has to do, in, at least in my opinion, because there's obviously no exact like turning point when everyone started doing it. It kind of just was the trend. I really think that it was ultimately like people didn't necessarily know any better or this was kind of the trend because of companies like Chris Reeve and many of the like whether you want to believe it or not many of the initial like knife YouTubers and knife forum members back in the early 2000s would talk about like the apex of quality is something like a Chris Reeve knives Sebenza or something like a Strider SNG or even something like a Hinderer XM18 all just so happen to be titanium frame locks. So I think the way this kind of started or how titanium frame locks kind of became the mark of a quality knife was just because looking at the trends back in the day, like this, if, if you wanted a quality knife, there was no doubt about it that it was going to be a titanium frame lock. But in addition to this too, I think what makes the titanium frame lock, at least initially, like what rose to, or what gave it its rise to predominance was the fact that not only was it simple for knife makers to make. So once again, a lot of customs are being made in, you know, some dude's garage where he has a small kind of factory, if you will, like there's some tools in there, maybe a CNC machine at tops, you know, like a, like a nicer, not like super high quality, but you know, like a nicer CNC machine at tops should be like a belt sander. So for those types of people running those types of operations, they can make something like a frame lock reasonably easy. Even something like a liner lock can be made reasonably easy for those people. Something like an axis lock is a lot harder to pull off at scale because you have to have the omega springs you have to be able to machine small parts you'll be able to cut small holes you know like small ovals into your you know um, handles and a lot more is required to make something like a ball bearing lock or an axis lock those are much harder to produce at scale than something like this because with a frame lock and you know there's better and worse execution of it but realistically you drill one hole here, there's a cut here, a cut here, and that cut interfaces with a sloped, um, you know, kind of a rise on the rear tang of the knife. So all things being considered, a frame lock is fairly easy to execute for a knife maker. And so that makes it thus more attractive from the making standpoint. Now, once again, I do want to be clear, that doesn't necessarily make these knives easy. And once again, I think the quality comes with execution. So how well a knife maker can execute on making a consistent product is there. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, that, you know, if you make a titanium frame lock, that's basically like cheating. It's certainly hard. And I'm not going to say that I could do this like in a garage. Obviously, it requires skill. So don't get me wrong. It's not a knock against any of these knives. But, you know, realistically speaking, it is that much easier. Easier. And once again, knowing that that frame lock is integral, that that is one of your handle slabs, that makes it a little bit easier as well. 
So I think that those are two of the biggest contributing reasons is that, you know, like when people, you know, once again, custom knife makers and stuff, or even people that grew up like, you know, I think oftentimes of Gavco, like Gavco started making knives, but he first started owning knives. And so like, you know, he owned things like the Chris Reeve knives, Sabenza, Hinder, Striders, stuff like that. And if, even if he didn't own any specific knife in particular, you know, he saw them, was influenced by them. And so if you're one of those custom makers that of course has been in the community, then the community influences you. So if the community says this is a high quality folder, then you look at it and you're like, well, that's a frame lock, right? So then you start making frame locks because you want a high quality folder. So part of me thinks it's execution. Part of me thinks that it is also partly that, you know, that's what's around you. And so you're building on what's around you and what everyone else already deems as quality. And realistically speaking, frame locks are not necessarily, you know, poor quality, but they were just, they were made by Chris Reeve and that was Chris Reeve's solution to the folding knife. Now, lastly too, I think the other thing that makes, um, frame locks more attractive and kind of gives them a rise to predominance is that they also tend to be, you know, like less complicated. And so that makes it easier to manufacture, but also more, um, easy to make a streamlined and simple design. So what that means is you can make a thinner knife, you can make a lighter knife, and I think that's where the real attractiveness of titanium comes into play. Because especially with someone like Strider, like they're not trying to make the world's lightest or thinnest knife, but you can see here with the Strider that the actual lock bar side, this titanium side, is very thin. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty darn thin slab of titanium, right? And then the rest of it is all G10. And they do that because it's a very, very effective way of making a lightweight knife because G10, obviously being a composite, is pretty darn lightweight. And on top of that, um, you know, the titanium is a very lightweight metal. And so if you throw a thin slab of titanium on this side with mostly G10 construction, you get a knife that's overall pretty darn lightweight and overall compact. I mean, another good example of this would be the Tour Chasm right g10 on one side titanium on the other with some standoffs on it and so overall or maybe some barrel spacers and overall a pretty darn lightweight knife right now granted this is a smaller knife but that being said the way it's constructed is designed to be lightweight thin and you know very compact and so once again if you're trying to make a knife to appeal to a crowd then going for something that requires you know g10 handle slabs on top of the lock um, or like on top of your liners that make your lock then it gets more tricky right because invariably you can't inset your detent into a piece of g10 so you have to make you know um, liners you have to make steel liners that sandwich those g10 handle slabs so it gets a little bit more tricky when you do something like a liner lock um, but anyways, that is kind of my, my thoughts. Of course, I would always love to hear what you guys think or know. Maybe I'm completely off. Maybe I don't know my history. I have a, a strong history of making things up. But uh, yeah, that's what I think, uh, in my opinion. And definitely, like, what is undeniable is that there are a lot of knives even now so you know that like the mark of excellence and quality is you know a titanium frame lock and it just seems like if you want to buy any more expensive knife like um some are starting to buck these trends but like it just seems like a lot of very expensive knives are this way i am excited to see there are a number of you know more quality companies like chapman knives um or i believe it's chapman lake knives that are making you know button lock knives that are once again you know they are sabenza level quality sabenza level pricing but they are button locks instead of you know like the run of the mill Ooh, there's another frame lock right um, i'd even like to see more like compression locks and stuff but anyways guys that is all i have to say for now as always god bless and i'm out